Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. Today is December 29, 2023. And we only have two days left in 2023. And then we will be officially starting 2024. Now, I know there are some of you who want to pay off debt. That's like your New Year's resolution. And so what I'm going to do to help you is give you this guide, right, to as a newbie, because I'm assuming you're a newbie here and you heard about this cool thing called Velocity Banking but are not exactly sure what it is. So I'm going to create this Velocity Banking newbie guide just for you so that when you go into 2024, you feel – into the new year, you feel confident about what the concept is and what the strategy is. OK? So I'm going to explain it to you as if you were five and hopefully five-year-olds could understand this video. So let's just get into it. So first things first, what is Velocity Banking? All it is is a cash flow and debt management strategy to quickly pay off debts using – and this is the key term here – lines of credit, right? So that's the key term. That's, a, that, that's the vocab word of the day. I don't know if you ever study for SAT vocab words, but this is the vocab word for the day. OK, so what is a line of credit? All it is is a financial tool where you can borrow money, pay it back, and then use it over and over again. And for most people, they use their checking account to pay your bills. For people who do velocity banking, it will be your line of credit. So this will be, quote, your new operating account, right? So for most people, as I said before, the checking account is the operating account. For you, if you have debt and you're trying to pay off debts quickly, you're going to use your line of credit as your main operating account. And you probably do have a line of credit, right? Because what is a tool that most people have where they borrow money, pay it back, and use it over and over again? It's a credit card. So we're going to go over the types of lines of credit, including credit cards, right? So credit cards are not the only types of lines of credit. So we'll just do a quick review of the types of lines of credit that exist out there. So the first one is a personal line of credit, right? It's, it's under your name. So basically you go apply to a bank or your credit union and say, hey, I want a personal line of credit. And based on your credentials, your income, your credit profile, they'll grant you, similar to a credit card, up to a certain limit, right? And then once they – let's say I have a $5,000 personal line of credit. All that means usually is I can go to the bank's website, I click a button, and then they can dump up to $5,000 of cash into my checking account, and they'll charge an interest rate maybe around 15 percent. Again, it depends on terms and conditions of your bank. Right, that's what a personal line of credit line of credit is. Now, business line of credit is a pretty much the exact same thing, except it's for a business. So, if you have a business and you need to borrow money easily to manage your cash flow, and so you're gonna apply to again a local bank or a credit union, and just say, "Hey, I want a business line of credit. Is that something you can offer me?" And they may or may not. Because there's a various factors of what, well, whether they're a grant or not. But again, the only difference between personal, it's under your name. Business, it's, it's under your business and to be used for your business expenses, right? Home equity. Home equity. Very similar to personal lines of credit except you're putting your home equity as collateral. And you may have never heard of the term home equity. If you're a homeowner, you have this – usually have this thing called equity and all it is – you know, you want to know the simplified formula is the, the home value, your home value minus all your home debts, right? Home loans. That's what home equity is. And you're, and banks will lend you usually up to 80% of your home equity, right? And then you could use that as a form of a line of credit. You're just putting your home equity as collateral. And usually when you give any sort of collateral in the lending world, you get higher limits and cheaper interest rates, right? So that's why people love home equity lines of credit. And the last one, credit cards. That's the last type of line of credit. And there are some restrictions, right? So I'm going to just be upfront that, yes, you can use this for velocity banking. You may have to make some adjustments here and there. Um, in today's example, we're going to go over a personal line of credit as our main velocity banking account. But just realize, hey, you can't pay one credit card with another credit card, right? But you can pay one line of credit with another line of credit. You cannot pay a loan with a credit card unless you're using Plastique. But you can certainly pay um, 
a loan with a line of credit, right? Lines of credits are really flexible. So here's the really cool thing, right? I don't know if you ever heard the saying that balance transfers are is like kind of like robbing Peter to pay Paul. I don't know if you ever heard that that phrase before. Well, with lines of credit, let's say with my personal lines of credit, I borrow hundred dollars, and then the next month they require to me maybe require me to pay like thirty dollars minimum, right? What I can do is just borrow that thirty dollars from the same line of credit. <laughs> I get borrowed from the same line of credit and pay it back, right? So it's like robbing Peter to pay Peter, literally, right? So with credit cards, when I do balance transfers, they may charge me a 3% fee in order to rob Peter to pay Paul. But with lines of credit, I could just pull that same money from the same line of credit and pay it back, and it satisfies the minimum monthly payment. That is a game changer. Okay, So we went over the types of lines of credit, and we're going to show an action in Excel spreadsheets. Okay, So let's go over the two requirements for doing velocity banking number one you need a budget and I want to show you how to do a budget it's really easy you have your income expenses and you got to list all your debts remember this is a debt removal strategy and every debt that you remove just means more cash flow more cash flow I'm sorry let me say that again more cash flow equals quicker debt payoff right and that's the name of the game now once we've done our budget then we have to select our line of credit to use as our main operating account right we have to select one line of credit, and usually it's going to be the highest limit, lowest interest rate uh, line of credit as our main operating account. And I'm going to show you how that works in a little bit. Okay, now here's the strategy for newbies. It's only two lines. All you got to do, right, is you're going to dump your entire paycheck into the line of credit and then take out your expenses from the line of credit. And that's, you just rinse and repeat, and that's it. Now, there's a little bit more nuance to it, but this is my strategy. Explain like like I'm five for, for all of you newbies going into 2024 and want to do velocity banking. And you're going to see an action, right? So let's go ahead and do velocity banking. Okay, so the first requirement is the budget, right? So now all we got to do is open up Excel. So let me open up the web version of Excel, okay? And you all see that, right? So before we actually get into it, one of the things I wanted to do is flex, right? So I kind of, I'm a self-proclaimed velocity banking expert, and this is just me flexing, right? So using this strategy, I'm not going to go over in today's video how to pay off your mortgage. We have other videos for that. But using this strategy, I did pay off 25% of my mortgage in a year. And I like to flex that in, in, in several of my videos. And so as you can see here, I don't know if you see the original loan amount. Uh, this is $238,000. This is the, my original home loan that I got in 2021. So how do you know I got this in 2021? You look at the maturity date. That's the final payment of the 30th year, right? And then you just subtract 30 years to get the first payment. Then it's 11 one 2021 right? And then you take a look here, okay? You see that the balance of the loan is 179. Now I don't know if you know anybody who paid off this, and you just do this calculation, fifty-eight thousand dollars of a of a mortgage in one, one year. Again, I'm not to go too much into detail how this works, but let's go ahead and show how much we actually paid off. So, what the way that we do that is equals two thirty-eight four nine six minus one seventy-nine. 681.65, right? So I'll show you how much we paid off. We paid off 58,000, right? And then now we're just going to add a percentage or divide it by the total amount that we borrowed to see how much we paid off, which is 238.496, right? And you see here it says 0 0.246. That's 25% of a mortgage. You round that that third digit up. That's 25%. I don't know anybody who else did that, but I did that, right? So that's why I'm a quote self-proclaimed velocity banking expert. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, hide this, right? And so again, what are the first two requirements? The first requirement is the budget. So let's go ahead and write down a budget. And we, here we have the average American's budget. So we'll say it's $5,000 a month. Household budget, combined household budget is usually uh, 70, 80 grand, somewhere around there. So we can put $5,000 as a nice round number. And expenses, this depends on you, right? So it depends on what area you live in. You know, Are you in a high cost of living, low cost of living? 
we're just gonna make this easy and say that the expenses are three thousand dollars right and then whatever's left over that's your checking and savings and here's the thing some of you might consider this unrealistic because how many people have two thousand dollars left left over in checking and savings right probably very few people because i remember a long time ago i read a study and this was like in 2014 that the federal reserve said that most americans could not come up with 400 dollars in an emergency and i remember that it was so real to me right i remember when i read that study i was like this is way too real this is way too meta because like i'm totally paycheck to paycheck and i'm broke but just for the sake of understanding the concept we'll just say two thousand dollars right and then once you have your expenses okay then we're going to have an expense breakdown right and when we do an expense breakdown, we have to list every single debt that we have. This is the most important thing because every debt that we pay off is more cash flow. And let's just do this. We'll have one loan and another loan, okay? And then we'll have rent and other like food, whoopsie, food, insurance, gas, etc. And what are the most common loans that we have? It's actually not a mortgage, believe it or not, because I don't know if you ever uh, heard, listened to any of the other videos, but we always talk about how 90% of the American population cannot get a mortgage. 90%. But what, what kind of loans do most people have? They got student loan and they got auto loans because this country is uh, designed for cars, right? So we need a car to be able to drive around um, – other places right so let's just kind of make up some figures so we'll just say that this is a 10k balance and we got a six percent interest rate and um we'll say that this is the, what's the average four hundred dollars a month right four hundred dollars a month and let me go ahead and copy and paste some of this just to make it easy to be able to fill out and we'll say the third auto loan is about thirteen thousand dollar balance, six percent. And what's the average auto loan these days? I remember one time, once upon a time, uh, I actually did Uber for a little bit, and then I I leased the car from Uber directly, and this was a long time ago, and I was paying four hundred a month, and to me it was it was fantastic because you know I didn't. I don't have a car, right? Like I didn't have a car and I'm doing Uber and people were freaking out that I'm paying like $400 a month even though I'm generating income, even though I didn't generate that much uh, for to, to make money, right? And nowadays, I think the average car payment is like $800 or $900. So I think within a few years, our society just kind of went up the wazoo and I don't know what happened, right? But let's just assume we have two loans. We got – a student loan and an auto loan and we got rent and other so what should happen is all of these expenses combined should equal three thousand dollars okay so let's just put in this payments here so four hundred uh six hundred and then one thousand one thousand right so for this person we got some cheap rent and some cheap other stuff because i don't think my expenses are this low but again, this is for the sake of demonstration, and that's it. Com part, part one, budget completed, right? Now we have to select our operating account, which is the line of credit, okay? So let's assume that, again, we applied uh, to the bank or the local credit union for a, credit uh, a line of credit, a personal line of credit. Now some of you might say, wow, like – you would get a twenty-five thousand uh, dollar line of credit. Grant banks would grant you that, and the answer is it depends, right? It depends on your credit profile, your income, right? Uh, have you been paying your bills? Do you have any lates or derogatories? And I personally have over two hundred twenty thousand dollars lines of credit. So again, this might be a lot for you, but I've been in that situation where once upon a time, um, I I would have been blown away if I got a five thousand dollar credit card. Right, so everybody's different at their stage, but if you join our group, you can learn. We don't guarantee anything, but you can learn and understand credit, right? And once you learn and understand what credit is for, your success 
or, or your probability of success just increases much higher. But again, I have over $220,000 in lines of credit, and let's just assume we have a $25,000 personal line of credit. So all that means is that you know if I want to dump twenty five grand into my checking account and borrow it at a 15% interest rate, I can do that with the click of the bank's website usually. Okay, so now we have these other things with the um, – Line of credit, we'll just assume that the first month we're doing Velocity Bank, that's month zero. And so let's do this. So let's do this. We'll call this second column Velocity Banking, right? So we have the average American here who's doing really decent. Like not going to lie, $2,000 a month in checking and savings is no joke. That's, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Now, what we're going to do is focus on debt payoff, right? Yet – not lose any of our access to our cash. And it's really important, right? Because a lot of people, right? There's a lot of people out there. I've talked to a lot of you through Zoom calls. Tell me, I have 20 grand in savings and 20 grand in credit card debt. And we're afraid to put our checking and savings directly into our debts, right? And especially with loans, right? Because loans are a one-way street. If we overpay a loan, can we ever get it back? Even if we beg the student loan or auto loan company? I don't think so. Maybe if you talk to the manager and escalate and talk to the manager's manager, you might. But I am not aware of any loan company that will just refund you money for overpaying because that's the nature of the product, right? So here's the thing. When most people – dump this $2,000 directly into the student or auto loan. No, but what we want to do is overpay it, yet still have access and control of our cash. Okay? So now let's take a look at this, right? So we're going to re-engineer our finances. So we have this $25,000 line of credit. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to bank's website and say, you know what? I want to free up $1,000 of cash flow without having – to make more money. $1,000 cash flow. How do I do that? Right? Well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the bank's website and I say, hey, Mr. Bank, and I don't think that's actually how, they, how people actually talk, but I'm going to pretend that they do because I don't think people actually talk to websites like a bank's website saying, hey, Mr. Bank, but whatever. Uh, I want 23 grand into my checking account. So we're going to do 23 grand, right? Because that's the current balance of the student and the auto loan, okay? And then we're going to pay these off. We're going to pay the student auto loan off and look, look at what happens. Zero, zero. Bam. And then this becomes depleted to zero, right? So we borrowed twenty-three grand in that personal line of credit, okay? Now, we can take a look at this. What happened to our expenses, okay? What happened to our expenses? Our expenses magically went from Three grand to two grand. Three grand to two grand, right? So now our cash flow is now three grand a month because all it is is this minus this. 5,000 minus 2,000. Now let me kind of go over the basic strategy, right? You dump your paycheck into the line of credit and then you take out your expenses from the line of credit. So – after every month, the balance is going to go down approximately by $3,000, right? Yeah, I get there's going to be some variances in your expenses, but we're just making some estimations, okay? So what happens when you dump your entire paycheck, it does two things. It satisfies a minimum monthly payment, and it minimizes the interest because the interest is calculated by the average daily balance, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I dump, uh, this is month zero. I dump in my 5000 here. This is going to be 18000 And then eventually in month one, right, month one, my expenses are going to creep up, and then this is going to go to 20000 right? Okay? And so every month, the balance is going to go down about 3000 right? And so what we have to do is just make sure that as we're doing this, if we want to be really accurate, calculate the interest. And I'm going to show you an easy way to calculate the interest. So what you do, the way that the banks calculate the interest is by the average daily balance. And if you take a look here, there's this average function right here. And then what you do is just do click this and this. So like H2, H3. 
it's going to give you the midpoint between these balances. Now, that's not actually the, how the bank calculates it. This is just a starting point. But the average daily balance is based on when you make your, your expenditures and they just calculate the averages there, not the midpoint like we're doing right here. But we multiply it by the interest rate. So 0.15, and where do we get the 0.15? You see this 15% interest rate, right? And then you make sure that you divide by 12, okay? Why 12? Because the interest that you get, like the APR, A stands for annual, is for, is for the whole year. And you want to get the monthly interest, so you divide by 12, okay? So this is just an estimate of the interest. And then all we got to do for month two, so this is like the second statement, is just get the previous month's balance, so H3, plus the interest, so I3, and then subtract it by your cash flow, which is 3000 right? So remember that you got the $5,000 income and the $2,000 expenses. 5000 minus 2000 is 3000 So bam. Okay. And then all you do is copy and paste this formula going forward. And then you wait until this either goes to zero or some sort of a negative number, right? Let's take a look at that. This is good. Like I said, this is a negative number. And we got negative interest. That's crazy. <laughs> but usually when you do that, I get the negative number, you just put zero right here, right? And then we'll see how long it takes us. Three, four, five. Yeah, let's go ahead and fill out the cells. So here's the thing. This nine months is only like the 89 cent interest or whatever. Actually, yeah. So it, it takes us about nine months to pay off 23 grand, right? You have to put a, you know account for another month just specifically for the interest. But look how easy it was. And here's the cool thing. Like, you know how we were worried about if we dump our entire paycheck or checking and savings into a loan? We're, we, let's say we have a $200 emergency. We're not going to get it back, even though we'll pay it off quickly, right? But here, when we're doing this the first month, right, if we have a $200 emergency, who cares? Because we'll just delay the payoff by another month or whatever, right? But here... If we dump our entire checking and savings into it and we're consistent on it and then month five we have you know, an emergency breakdown of our car, which is totally possible, uh, we're going to feel the pinch, right? We're going to feel the pinch. Okay, so now let's just go back here and we'll just say let's go ahead and sum up the interest of how much we paid. So let's go ahead and do that. So we are – Expected to pay one thousand dollars, one thousand one hundred dollars of interest, completely pay off everything, including the interest, in about nine months, right? And we paid off twenty three thousand dollars of debt. So that's mind blowing. I don't know about you, but I don't. Do you know anybody who's able to pay off twenty three thousand dollars of debt that quickly and not sweat about it, right? That's the key word. You don't sweat about it. A lot of people, you know, you can pay off debt quickly. You dump your entire checking savings to that debt, and they might even have credit cards as backups, right? So here's the difference between velocity banking and, um, you know, your average American is what's your main operating account? Here, my main operating account was a line of credit. Now, if I use your line of credit as a backup, right, and some people, why, why don't you just do that? is because you're going to get into a problem called segregation of income and this is why most six figure people uh, six figure paycheck earners are broke because they don't have just one or two debts they have like 15 debts and their income is all over the place and what we want to do is make it easy for you to pay it off right pay off your debt so that your paycheck just goes into one place and this is how human beings were were the most effective you ever notice that multitaskers never get things done you ever notice that? We're going to we're going to prevent the multitasking of our money, right? We're just going to put our money into one single place. Okay? So yeah, that's pretty much it. Guide for newbies, we paid off $23,000 of debt in about 8 to 9 months, $1,000 of interest, and now we're pretty much debt free and we have, you know, actual real savings in our savings account because we're not we're not having that scenario that the banks want where we have 20 grand in savings 20 grand in credit card debt we actually paid off our debt 
and they're not making money off of us just because we want to have a little bit of cushion in our savings just in case there's emergencies. But why do we need that when we have our line of credit, right? All right, so this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship. <laughs> if you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the Google Form link below. Otherwise, two more days until we're 2024, people. Two more days, and hopefully you'll be on your journey to pay off your debt quickly. All right, have a great day, and we will speak next time.